to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. As always, it is so great to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled Praying for a Blessing by my daughter Daniela White. Dear Lord our Savior, we come to you to ask for mercy and grace. We feel our weakness without your strength. We want to see your face. You know us before we come, each heart and thought you see. Give us rest from burdened souls and set our spirits free. While we plead with you, our God, may we wrestle as Jacob did and feel a blessing that comes with knowing that we will do as you bid. Then we shall sing of your grace as you show us the way. We'll walk in power that comes from you as we humbly kneel and pray. This we ask in Jesus' name, in the face of any foe. Lord, unto you yield us a blessing. We will pray and not let you go. And the church said, Amen. Our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Luke chapter 2, verses 36 and 37, which reads, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, and she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Allow me to share with you some important points regarding this verse from Matthew Henry's commentary. There was much evil then in the church. If you will, he said, uh, yet God left not himself without witness, and always dwelt in, or at least attended at, the temple. She was always in a praying state of mind, a praying spirit, uh, gave herself to prayer, and in all things she served God. Those to whom Christ is made known have great reason to thank the Lord. She taught others concerning him. Let the example of the venerable saints, Simeon and Anna, give courage to those whose hoary heads are like theirs a crown of glory, being found in the way of righteousness. The lips soon to be silent in the grave should be showing forth the praises of the Redeemer. Our prayer motivator quote for today is from Leonard Ravenhill. He said, But have we Holy Ghost power, power that restricts the devil's power, pulls down strongholds, and obtains promises. Daring delinquents will be damned if they are not delivered from the devil's dominion. What has hell to fear other than a God-anointed, prayer-powered church? 
somebody ought to say amen right there where you are. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part three of our series titled Defining Faith from Dr. John R. Rice. What we call faith may be sometimes a self-deception, unfortunately. A Christian scientist practitioner, for example, may teach a sick man to say over and over, there is no such thing as evil. Sickness is only an error of mortal mind. I am well, completely well. I have no pain. And the Christian scientist may induce a state of mind whereby he thinks he is not sick. He ignores the pain and the evidence of his senses and actually thinks he is well. And if his disease is one in which the mental attitude may be decisive, perhaps he will get well. A large per percent of our suffering is really mental. Worrying and fretting are great enemies of our health. A confident, happy mind uh, has much to do with recovery from sickness in many cases. But uh, if his sickness is not mental and cannot be affected by the attitude of mind, then the Christian scientist may die. As Christian scientists and everybody else do, uh, he has assurance, but an assurance based on self-deception. It is not faith in God. In such a case, if God does not, if God does not through other agents and means see fit to heal him, uh, he would not heal the man because of that self-induced confidence. The Christian scientists may have a assurance, but it is not based upon any promise of God, and God is under no obligation to give what is expected. But I say their normal teaching that there is uh, no sin, no sickness, that sin is only an error of mortal mind, it is not faith in God. It is a self-induced attitude of assurance and confidence which is not based upon God's word nor upon his faithfulness and is not faith in God. Instead of faith healing, Christian science healing, unity healing, etc. should we call mental healing. There is a such there is such a thing as mental healing, but let us not confuse it with the matter of faith in God and divine healing. Amen. Now, friend, it is time for us to pray. Remember, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Holy Father God, help us, Lord, not to deceive ourselves with a false assurance. Help us to get our peace, our joy, and our assurance only from you, by putting you first, putting what uh, you want us to do for others after that. We confess our sins, and Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Fill us, Lord, with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would truly lead us, guide us, and direct us throughout this day in the way that you want us to go. We pray, uh, Lord, today for three million people to come to know your Savior through this ministry and millions more through other ministries around the world. Lord, we pray for the revival of your local churches that stand for you around the world. We pray for the healing of this nation. Give us the uh, leadership that you want us to have. We pray, Lord, 
that you would uh, save and give leadership and wisdom, knowledge and understanding to President Obama and to all of the governmental officials in this country and around the globe. And Lord, we also pray for your servants across uh, the nation and around the globe who stand for you, pastors and church leaders, missionaries, evangelists, Lord, that truly save them and bless them and lead them and guide them in the way that you would have them to go to lead your congregations in the way that you would have them to go. Uh, Holy Father God, we continue in prayer and we pray for three people that we've chosen who are on our prayer list, who have sent in their prayer requests. We pray for Moses in Silver Spring, Maryland. Provide him with financial help, protect his wife and three children from uh, the sin and foolishness in the neighborhood. Lord, we pray for life in Beijing, China. Lord, we pray that you heal Binyan Wu of his illness and help him to accept your salvation. Lord, we pray for Danny in Joint uh, uh, Base Lewis McCord, Washington. Answer his requests and provide him with a miracle. Holy Father God, we pray for the following people who have received you into their hearts recently. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them and strengthen them in the faith and be the servants that you want them to be. We pray for Italio. Oh, yeah. We pray for Kathy, Kathy rather, in India, and we pray for Stephen in Honolulu. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people, rather, who have uh, recently, uh, who have been saved for a while, and uh, who have rededicated their lives to you. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, uh, but who have recommitted their lives to you recently. We rejoice with them in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray especially for Augusto in Colombia, Kathy in New Zealand, uh, Kufa in Lazaka. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you are listening today to this broadcast and you're wondering what it is all about, uh, and you have not trusted Christ, you have not accepted Christ, so uh, you know, uh, please uh, notice with me the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend of mine, if you are willing to trust Christ as your Savior right now, please pray with me the following prayer. Amen from your heart. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul from sin and from hell and change my life forever. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, Please contact us today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. This will help you get started in your Christian life. Until next time, remember, dear friend, pray, thank, do. God bless you.